Federal. We have uh, time here for a couple of questions from our audience. Mike. Uh, yes. When you execute someone, you, in a sense, end their punishment, shouldn't it, like, if you keep them in jail for longer and they have to deal with the repercussions of what they've done for the rest of their life, couldn't that be considered a greater punishment? It could be in theory, but in practice, except for the very few, it's not. And the, the clearest proof of that is the suicide rate on, um, among lifers, that they find life worth living. And the notion that life is worse than death simply doesn't work. By the way, if it were, then the whole jurisprudence that requires extra special due process for the death penalty, precisely because it's more severe punishment, would no longer work. But, no, again, the proof is that lifers don't kill themselves. Well, I'd have to disagree with that. If you look at the example of someone like Timothy, Timothy, Timothy McVeigh, and you, you can say this is an isolated incident, but there are numerous examples of people like Mr. McVeigh who want to be executed, who don't want to spend the rest of their life in prison. And if Mr. McVeigh had never faced a death sentence and was sentenced to a term of indefinite years or life without parole, we wouldn't have heard about him. We would never have heard about him again. There wouldn't have been all the hoopla that happened around the time of his execution. And he would be sitting in a cell suffering for the rest of his life and getting punishment for what he'd done. By executing the person, you're only giving them a, basically a platform as well. Uh, so to, to say that somehow by ending this, by, by uh, ending, ending their life, it's somehow um, going to be more just than allowing them to stay in prison for the rest of their lives and contemplate what it is they've done. I know. I okay. all contemplate it. Well, certainly they do. You should check out our website. We have I a lot. Check of out your website. I checked out the guys who are serving life sentences. Well, they certainly. don't contemplate. We're, we're all corresponding right. with over 500 of them, so we we are just as familiar with that. Let me just get to uh, Amber's question before we're finished here. Hi. Um, when a person murders, they are acting in violation of the social system they live in. Should they expect to be protected under the rights that they violated? Okay, rights. Well, I think this is, I mean, we were talking about this at break about this is the fundamental question. I mean, is there an inherent right to life in every person? And the fundamental difference here is that you believe that there is something a person can do that, you know, gives us the right to take their life. And I believe that there is nothing a person can do that gives you the right to take their life. And that is the basic debate. And where you stand on that issue determines where you will fall on which side you will fall. Almost. Pretty I, much. I, I think there's, a, that there's something that someone can do that gives us the responsibility to kill them. And not because they're not worth anything. Precisely the opposite. It's because, it's because they, they retain their responsibility. They retain their human dignity to the extent that they made that vicious choice that gives us the responsibility to respond. If they were worthless as human beings, then we would just use them for medical experimentation. Then we, we would be indifferent as to what we do to them. But we do care precisely because they do have value. They have negative value, but they have value. I think that there's still a profound difference then in the way that we view the issue. I don't believe that negative value can happen. Well, there you go. Not one iota of movement, except you've had this discussion, <laughs> you know, many times before, and the feeling mm -hmm. still is that in a civil society, you know, the death you penalty can. has absolutely no place in a civil society. And a hundred years from now, we're all going to look back, and we're going to look at the practice of capital punishment the way that we look back now on slavery. When you look at uh, what was happening in residential schools and orphanages with uh, with uh, the mentally ill years ago, once it was opened up to public scrutiny things changed, and I believe that as the death penalties open up to public scrutiny down the road, we'll see that it was wrong. Okay, I'll uh, stop you there. Okay. And thank you all so much for, you. Uh, for joining me today at this table and discussing this difficult issue. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, <laughs> Valerie Pringle's wardrobe supplied courtesy of Hope Renfrew.